Okay, so before when we left off, we were able to create text on the player's position. So if I'm moving around here and pressing uh, the space button, well, then I'm able to create some different scrolling combat text. Or not scrolling combat text, it's simply just um, some, some text now. So let's make this text move upwards first of all. So if I open up my script and go to the combat text here, then we can start writing some code in here. First of all, public float, um, or actually let's let's make it private. So we're going to create a private float called speed. And we are going to create a private vector free called direction. So we need to be able to decide how fast is our text gonna move and what direction is it gonna move in. And then we are going to create a private float called fade time, because we want to decide how fast it's gonna fade out. And we are going to say private. Now oh, let's wait with that actually. Okay. So these are the ones that we need right now. I'm going to take a step by step instead of just adding everything right away. In update, we are going to say float dot translation equals speed multiplied by time dot delta time. So this translation here is going to be used to move our player around. Um. So our player is going to move by, not the player, sorry, the text, of course. Uh, the transform, the text is going to move by saying transform the translate. Vector three, I know not vector three, uh, direction, multiplied by translation. So this line of code is going to move our text, but we haven't set the direction yet, and we haven't set the speed yet. The direction and the speed has to be set from within our combat text manager, basically. So if we make a public void called initialize, and we tell it that this initialize needs some speed and needs a vector free called direction for now. Um, and the fade time we're going to leave out right now. We are going to do like this. Okay. So this initialize is going to set the speed and the direction of the current combat text. So whenever the combat text manager creates some um, combat text, well, then the combat text can have the correct speed and the correct direction according to the combat text manager. So we can say this speed equals speed and this direction equals direction. So the reason that I write this is because I want to access these fields up here. If I wouldn't write this, then it's going to access this one and it's going to set it equal to itself because they have the same name here. You can see I assigned made the same variable. So I can write this dot to make sure that I access direction up here and set it equal to this one. I'm getting in throughout the initialize function here. And when this initialize function has run, well, then we have the correct direction and the correct speed here to move the text around. Okay, so we need to call this initialize um, function somewhere. Um, and we can basically do it here. We can say sct dot get component combat text dot initialize. It needs a speed and a direction. So basically up here in our combat text manager, we can make some public variables so that we from our Unity editor can set the direction and the speed of the combat text. Um, basically, you can make more directions, you can make more speeds and make some if statements and stuff that will make sure that if it's a critical hit, for example, you want to move to the left and if it's not a critical, you want to move to the right or if it's healing, you want it to flow out on the left side and if it's damage, you want it to go downwards or something. So I'm just showing you how you can do one thing and you can always customize it the way you want it so that it suits your exact needs. I'm just gonna make public float speed and a public, not an outline, but a public vector free called direction. And if we save this, go down here. Initialize wants some speed and it wants direction. And the reason that it wants that is because we just defined in here that it should take in speed and direction, of course. So that's why we can call initialize from here 
by taking the scrolling combat text we just instantiated, accessing the combat text script, because it's the combat text script we're writing this in. And when we access that, we can call initialize and give it speed and direction. And now it should run this code, update all the time and go in the right direction. Um, so if we click on our player, not, no, not our player, our combat text manager, we will see that we have the combat text script. Let's just let it update. Maybe I forgot to save actually. There we go. Yeah. So we have a speed. Let's put it at five direction. We want it to go upwards. So positive one and Y and not, um, not horizontal and not in the C axis. Try to run the game. If we press space, then the text goes up and up very fast, as you can see. So five is a little too fast. Let's try with 0.5 instead. So now the text goes upwards instead of um, instead of going um, very fast. I mean, so if you want to change this, you can say that it should be positive one on the x-axis then you'll see that it goes to the right instead of uh, going upwards as you can see here so you can simply just customize it as you want and as I said you can always put some if statements inside the manager that will make them go in the right direction I want it to go upwards so we are just gonna keep one in the y-axis speed was a little low what about 0.8 or something not 9 but 8 Okay. What else? Now we have the text that is moving. So maybe we want to set up the correct text as well. So in our common text manager, we'll also have to set up some text. So basically we need to say the create text here also need to take in a string called text. And then we can say sct. Uh, it's just something else called text. I need a comma, of course. So then we can say sct dot uh, get component uh, text and then dot um, text equals text. Okay. If you can't access this text here, if you're having some problems here with with the text, well then it's because you haven't written using Unity Engine dot UI up here in the top of your file because the text is in that namespace if you can see here if I delete this you'll see that the text gets uh, gets this red squishy line and you need this namespace here using the engine.ui to access the text so what this does is that it actually access on the text here it finds the text script and on that text script we are accessing the text to change this text into something else as we can see here we are accessing text, component, getting the text, and setting it equal to the text we are giving in here. So we need to tell whenever we call the combat manager to put in some, some new combat text, we need to tell the combat manager what it needs to write. And this could be the damage that you just took. For example, if you have an enemy hitting you, you could take damage in and write it out, or you can write something else. But right now, I am going to write... Um, Hello, um, yeah, just hello. So the player is going to write hello every time you press a space right now, because we are telling the create text that it should start at our position and give hello with it. And we have asked for a string now, and the string is going to be set in here. So let's try to run the game again. Hello, hello, hello. So now it's written hello every time the player um, runs around here. Okay, um, actually I want to try the front style to bold instead. And now we would like to change the color of the text. So we can copy this line and paste it underneath that color instead. And we need to tell what kind of color it is. So we can make comma here, color, color.
color. So every time we take damage or we get healed, the player needs to know what color he wants to show the damage in himself or the enemy or wherever. Uh, so our create text now takes in a color and now we set the color down here. And let's save this. Now we need to set the color. So hello, let's let's make it some color dot sorry dot what color do you want? What color let's try white just to have something else. And if we save this and jump back, you'll see that it should be white now. Try. So now hello is white. So maybe in your game you don't want you want an outline on your text so it looks a little better. Um, if you want that, you can actually select your text prefab, go to add component and write outline. And you can see it's actually just a outline script you'll put on and you can make the distance and you can change the color of the outline and everything. But right now, as you can see, if I keep it black, then my text now has a black outline on it. Maybe it's hard to see when it's not full screen. Try to do this again. As you can see now, it has this black outline on it, so it's easier to differ from the background, for example. So now our player can run and say hello. So I think that's it for this part of the tutorial. In the next part, we will have a look at how we can actually remove the text again. Because right now we can run and, and spam hello and it's not that interesting. So we would like it to fade out and disappear from our game now. And that's what we're going to do in the next part.